Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely the Director General and Chief Executive of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. John Shipman. His Royal Highness highlighted the important role research studies play towards building strategies to achieve sustainable development and enhance the foundations of communication and dialogue to promote progress, development, security and stability. He noted the joint cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the IISS through the ongoing successful regional security forum, the Manama Dialogue, which attracts leading policymakers and regional and international security dignitaries. Dr. Chipman expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness, noting his continued commitment to supporting the cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the IISS. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Yazainal, chaired the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law regarding amending the laws of establishing and regulating the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority. The Council also approved a draft law regarding the general budget. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held a meeting remotely, chaired by Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, where the Council expressed congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasions of the 20th anniversary of the National Action Charter and the 53rd anniversary of the BDF establishment. The Council praised the role of the BDF as well as the security and military bodies in defending the kingdom and its gains. The Council also discussed the latest developments regarding the coronavirus and praised the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which makes the kingdom a model in dealing with the pandemic. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa dedicated the victory of a Tailat camels in the fourth annual edition of Al Bashayr Arabian Camel Racing Festival held in the Sultanate of Oman to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness expressed pride in the achievements of the kingdom in the racing festival, adding that it reflects the support and patronage of camel racing, which in turn brings Bahrainis closer to their heritage and encourages the preservation of culture and tradition. His Highness underscored Bahrain's keenness on participating in golf events relating to traditional sports to make more achievements in the name of the kingdom. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the organizers of Al Bashayr Racing Festival, wishing them further success in future festivals. The Arab Parliament reiterated its rejection of the incorrect information and inaccuracies that are not based on objective facts or evidence in the Amnesty International report regarding the human rights situation in Bahrain during the third Arab Parliament session chaired by its Speaker Adel Asumi held at the Arab League headquarters in Cairo. The Arab Parliament affirmed that the report was unprofessional and subjective and did not provide real evidence for the accusations it claims that are based on lies and misinformation, which is in stark contrast to the basic regulations adopted by the United Nations to monitor and document the human rights situation, which the organization has not followed. In the Council statement during the session, they emphasized that the Amnesty International's report discussed cases that Bahraini judiciary institutions have described as a blatant and unacceptable interference in the work of Bahraini national judiciary and in the internal affairs of the kingdom. The Arab Parliament stressed that the Amnesty International Report has ignored the reality of human rights in the kingdom and the reforms it has made in this regard, which refutes the false allegations included in the Amnesty International Report and represents a reaping effect on the remarkable achievements of Bahrain in this field. The Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and CEO of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dana, participated as a Deputy President of the General Society for the Environment in the preparatory meeting of the Society's fifth session under the slogan, Enhancing Procedures for Nature to Achieve Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. bin Dana affirmed the Society's keenness on unifying international visions and encouraging global efforts for a better future and sustainable development that ensures the protection of natural and environment resources through implementing a United Nations Environment Program. He noted that the meeting aims to bolster cooperation between all countries to resolve all environmental issues and achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. Bendana stated that the meeting provides member countries and all cooperating parties with a platform to exchange and implement successful approaches that contribute to achieving the environmental dimension of the 2030 plan. He asserted that the meeting provides an opportunity for member countries and cooperating parties to take ambitious steps towards 
allows better rebuilding by ensuring the contribution of investments to economic recovery after the pandemic. Deputy Director General of the General Traffic Department, Colonel Muhammad Ali Darraj, indicated that the violations of the red light decreased by 48% in 2020 compared to 2019. This reflects the extent of drivers' commitment to traffic regulations and rules and their awareness. The Deputy Director General confirmed that as part of the efforts to raise traffic awareness and employ smart systems to raise traffic safety rates, the General Traffic Department continues its work in the awareness and legal aspects through informational awareness campaigns campaigns that it provides to citizens and residents in several languages. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 3,262 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 278,222. The ministry renewed its call for all the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,274 with 820 recoveries, 721 registered new cases and two deaths. 258 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 452 are contacts of active cases and 11 are travel related. The deceased were a 72 and a 67 year old citizens. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health and the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus continues its calls for everyone to adhere to precautionary measures in line with the efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus. And to speak more about the matter, we are joined on the phone by public health doctor, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Majid Al Awadi. Hello, Dr. Mohammed. What are the reasons behind the spike in COVID 19 cases recently? Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, first of all, thank you very much for having me on the show. And I would like to thank everyone who's listening at the moment. And uh, I want to extend um, our sincerest gratitude to all the entities who have been um, very, very helpful and cooperative with the Public Health Directorate. Um, I would like to say that everyone in the Public Health Directorate, um, from physicians and from nurses and specialists and all the volunteers as well, that we are working day and night, hopefully, to continue our contact tracing methods and try to limit the infection in society and the community as much as we can. Um, regarding the question of spike of cases, um, as you know, we are a very family-oriented society. We are very well integrated, and um, a lot of people do visit uh, family members uh, here and there. And even upon case investigations that we have in the public health director, we see that the majority and a lot of cases um, had family gatherings, had uh, gatherings here and there where they went out and uh, seen family members. And obviously, yes, the uh, recent spike of cases as we have seen um, by mid-December and then in January, and then we've seen a major spike in early February till mid-February. Um, yes, definitely the new variant plays a big role here. It is more virulent. It is um, more infectious than the other. Um, back back when we uh, before uh, December and November we had um, 100 to 200 cases a day and then we started to realize oh it's becoming 250 to 300 and then it just started to increase and spike to 500 600 cases a day and that a big role of it was definitely the new variant and the continuous um, gatherings that we have um, seen upon case investigation in the, pu in the public health directorate. Doctor, what are the advice precautions to decrease the spread of the virus? Yes, well, definitely, I would say that especially that we are a family-oriented society, very integrated. We, when we see our family members, when we sit with people who are immunocompromised, people who are elderly, living with us at home, I know it would be difficult for a lot of people to wear a face mask when they're sitting with them at home or would advise that elderly person or immunocompromised person to wear a face mask, but it is um, the better good for everyone that we do that. I understand maybe you would live with someone who is old and it would be difficult for you not to see someone who's living with you at the same house. But if you, if you would really want to continue your precautionary measures, we have to take precautionary measures even at our own houses. 
We'd have to take precautionary measures outside of our houses as well. But imagine with me that if someone uh, works at a place and then uh, another person works at another place and different family members who work different places and go out and see different people would all gather in this household. If one person would test positive, it would be very difficult for those living in the household, especially if they are elderly, especially if they have comorbidities. Um, it would be difficult for them. So we need to protect ourselves and we need to protect those who are around us, even if it's our, at our own houses. Thank you so much, Doctor. Public Health Doctor, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Majid Al Awadi, thank you for joining us.